This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I want to talk about using track data to find hidden power. What I'd like you to do is open up in Megalog Viewer HD almost any log, it doesn't really matter at this point, and under Calculated Fields, Optional Fields 2, there is an option RPM per second. Go ahead and hit put a tick mark in front of that, or a check mark in front of that. It will ask you to reload the data. Go ahead and reload. The other thing I'd like to do is under Calculated Fields, Custom Fields, there'll be a drop down Custom Fields, add a custom field, and I want to add one called RPM per second. Then in the formula, what I want you to do is fill in a open parenthesis, square bracket, the whatever RPM is in your data log, close bracket, minus, and the way you read this is the RPM 10 records back, and on through the formula. I want to make sure that this number, the 10, is the same as in the number of the 10 of the time minus field, and also you will have to play around with this 10 in your data depending on the data rate. I happen to be looking at data in this example of about 200 samples per second. So you'll be up in the 10 range. But if you have a slower data rate, you might be down in the RPM minus 3 or 4. Again, it will ask you to reload the data. And what I want you to do is then tag RPM per second in the second trace. And what you get is this relatively noisy signal. But once you have that in your trace, now we can hit in Megalog Viewer HD the three little lines and up will pop a field where you can choose field smoothing. By default, that'll be a five. Once you tag it, then you can come in and go to the smoothing factor and increase the five up to 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 if you have a high data rate. And what will end up happening is it will smooth that data out. This happens to be a car pulling in third gear, shifting to fourth, and a long pull. Our scale is going from 258 seconds up to 270, so it's about a 12 second left to right. Our trace is RPM per second, or how fast the motor is pulling through the power band. So now, if I add a red line just for reference, you'll notice that this motor is pulling very smoothly up through the power band with no dips or anything like that. If it was to have traction issues, you'd see this jump up and then come back down as he'd go over a bump or whatever it is that's causing the traction problem. But notice how his RPM per second is very flat. If it would come down to the dotted line, because I'm running from a scale of minus 500 to 500, if you were to go past the power band, that would come down to zero, or zero RPM per second. Here is a very similar motor on the same course. This one has considerably less horsepower. And as you see, it comes up through the power band. But look at the way the RPM per second drops fairly steady all the way through the range. You'll also see where I took the left mouse click. It went from a point here to right here. You can see the vertical lines. And a little average box will show up in the bottom right corner. Basically what this is telling us is I went from a minimum of about 6,000 RPM to just over 7,000 RPM for a total delta of 990 RPM. Basically it took me 6.997 seconds to cover that entire range of RPM for an average RPM per second of 141 RPM per second. But this is great for testing because then you can come back, pull out half a degree of timing, do exactly the same test, and see if your averages are better, your total speed is better. You can see peaks or valleys where maybe that change made a bigger effect than others. This is essentially what you do on an inertia dyno, but you don't have to buy the $60,000 dyno to make the test. All you need is a repeatable place that you have good traction and it's safe, such as a racetrack. Drag race track is wonderful for doing this. Again, I just added the red line, and what you can see is how the RPM increase has got a very definite hump in it, or this guy is starting to run out of power at the top end, but he never does get to zero. Now what I've done is open the log, and then under file, 
there's a choice compare data and open up a second log and then what you can do is the slider will show up and you can move it left to right to get to the same area in the track for both logs. You can on the top right corner there's a couple of arrows right up here where you can do a fine adjust moving the two graphs left to right slightly. But notice that down around 6,000 RPM, I've got both motors synced, and look how this motor definitely responded to the change better because I'm pulling more RPM at the same amount of time. Down at the bottom, you can see where the one pull was at 8,000 RPM, where the other one was 78.95, or virtually 100 RPM higher at the end of the pull. That's a pretty impressive change. This happens to be data coming from a typical drag race car. This is an automatic. Where the guy pulls first gear, shifts to second, shifts to third, and on out through the back end of the track. What I'm looking at is just the data as he pulls through second gear. I begin pull my left mouse button across to the right for a change of 1500 RPM in the bottom right corner. It took 2.34 seconds to make that 1500 RPM change and an average 630 RPM per second. That's over that range of the motor. But notice the way the pull definitely drops off once he gets to 7,500 RPM. And by the time he got to 8, you can see this go flat, and sure enough, the RPM per second drops almost to the dotted line. Anything below the dotted line is actually decel or where the motor is changing down in speed, like during the shift. Now what I've done is open both the RPM per second, the one that was the predetermined calculated field, and the one we created. You can see right here that I'm running a filter of about 65 on the one on the red trace and about 40 on the green trace. But look how you're getting essentially identical data. Once you find a setup you like for your motor, stop playing with the filters. Always come back to the same set of filters. And you can get very repeatable data as you're changing possibly the target AFR or timing, uh, boost control, almost anything you want to check. For example, traction. Let's try 15 pounds of boost, 20, 30 pounds of boost, and see exactly where we blow off the tires. And then back it off just a little bit. I want to take a moment to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com, these are the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD, the software I use to analyze almost all of these motors, no matter what ECU we're running. As long as I've got data that can get to a CSV file, I can load the data up. And be sure to hit subscribe on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.